Please open your Bible, 1 Samuel, chapter 15. From verse 1, I'm going to read it. Uh, Samuel also said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore heed the voice of the words of the Lord. The said the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed uh, him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. So Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in a, a telai, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men of Judah and Saul came to a city of Amalek and lay in wait in the valley. Then Saul said to the uh, Canaanites, go depart, get down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. Uh, for you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from among the Amalekites and Saul attacked the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, uh, which is east of Egypt. He also took Aga, king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the, with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Aga and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good, and were un unwilling to dis utterly destroy them. But everything despised and worthless that they utterly destroyed. Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king, for he has uh, turned back from following me and has not perform performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel and he cried out to the Lord all night. So when Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel saying, Saul went to Carmel and indeed he set up a, a monument for himself and he has gone on around, passed by and gone down to Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Saul and Saul said to him, blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Yeah, I read up to there. Uh, when I was young, I was going, I was participating in the church. I was going to the church in the city called Daegu. One day, the pastor of me, yeah, he preached the words. He told us very, uh, very interesting episode about his marriage, about his marriage. When he finished uh, his uh, missionary school, by the guidance of God, he was able to meet, yeah, his wife, right, his wife. And then, so after some times, they made decision to get married together. So on that, on that day, on that day, he got a uh, lots of you know present gifts from brothers and sisters, and also yes, supported money, and also he told us that. Uh, one gift he never forget. One gift he never forget. It's unforgettable gift. He got one gift from past parts, past parts son and daughter. You know who past parts son and daughter, right? So son of past part. You know who past part? The founder of our mission. Okay. So his son and daughter at that time they were about eight or nine years old when they were very young so many years ago so they uh, gave him a very special gift so he was in the you know, wrapping uh, wrapping paper so when he opened the wrapping paper he was shocked and surprised you know what was in the wrapping paper wrapping box <laughs> okay, you don't know. Okay, so he was surprised because there's a there is a lots of lots of colorful pencils and colorful papers 
and rubbers, you understand, rubbers and some pencils and some scissors. So it's all, you know, stationaries, stationaries. <laughs> so pastor, uh, my pastor told me, okay, past a uh, part son and daughter get me some pencils, some rubbers, okay, some colorful, you know, the papers. It's all stationaries. You know, think about it. If you get those kind of, you know, gifts for Christmas or for your birthday, are you happy with that? You might say thank you, thank you, but but you are not very happy, right? You are not very happy. Why? Because we don't need a rubber, right? We don't need a pencil. We don't need a very colorful, you know, papers. But you know what? That was the best gift, not for my pastor, but for sons and son and daughter of Pastor Park. I believe they thought about what should we buy? What should we give him the gift, right? So they thought about that over and over and over. But finally, they made, they made decision to buy the, some pencils and rubbers, those kind of you know, stationaries. Why? Because in their own eyes, in their own, they were so young. Okay, in their own eyes, it looked so pretty. It looked so precious. Am I right? It looked so precious. That's why they they bought those kind of special gifts. Gifts. Okay, in the eyes of a young, you know, the young kids. Okay, those things are very useful. Those things are very uh, valuable things. But in our eyes, is there anyone who needs some colorful pencils or some pencils or rubber? Just let me know. I can buy you at any time, at any time. So uh, in their own eyes, it looked very uh, valuable. But in our eyes, it's not that, you know, valuable at all, right? Because we are not uh, we are no longer the young kid anymore. Okay, when we were young, when we were young, the way of our thought is very self-centered. You understand? When we were young, okay, we only thought about me and me and me. Am I right? So Pastor Zhang, yeah, he's going to going back to North Macedonia today. He is going back to North Macedonia with uh, his with his 17 months old the girl 17 months old girl her name is Sohyun Sohyun so she was yeah staying with us for a little bit over little over 1 month so she's so cute so everyone in my house they love the Sohyun a lot Sohyun where are you Juyoung Show, show us, so yeah. Everyone, please say hi to her. <laughs> so yeah, she, she's so pretty, right? She's so pretty. She's so cute. But you know what? She is so self-centered. She's so selfish. She never cared about, never cared about my feeling and my wife's feeling, okay? So she never cared about uh, his father's, his father and his mom, she only cares about what? What should I eat? Where should I go to eat something, right? Where should I go to watch, to watch YouTube, <laughs> to watch YouTube? That was the only thing she thinks about. You understand? The little baby, young, you know, kid, they only cares about themselves. But as we are growing up, growing up slowly slowly we are starting we are starting to think about not only myself but somebody else next somebody somebody else next to me right we are starting to think starting to think about my brothers and sisters and my parents and then yeah my neighbors my friends my other uh, family members and also also, if you are really a grown up, 
if you are really matured, you might be thinking about what this generation, the country, the whole world, right? The whole world. That was the meaning of growing up. Am I right? Meaning of matured, maturing and growing up. But as I said, as I said, the young kid, they feel like, they think like they are center of the whole universe. This whole, you know, this whole uh, solar, solar system must go around me, right? I'm a center. That is not heliocentric or geocentric. My century, me, what should I say? The myself century, right? Myself, me is the center of the, you know, the solar system. That is their feeling and way of their thoughts. Uh, I believe the spiritual life is very, uh, very similar. When we are saved, spiritually, we are very young, right? We are very young. So I don't know what year were you saved? Were you saved? What year? Maybe when you were 20, when you were 30 or 40s. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But when you are saved, you're uh, still spiritually the baby. So at that time, at that time, we feel like I'm a center. So we think like God is only for me. And then, so we are very self-centered. So at that time, we are treating uh, my God just like a taxi driver, taxi driver. You know what that means? Oh, let's say I take a taxi from here and maybe taxi driver ask, is asking me, okay, where do you want to go, right? Where do you want to go? I say, okay, let's go to, let's go to Hydro Airport, Hydro Airport. Okay, who set up the direction? Me, right? Me. I set the direction. I want to go to Hydro Airport or I want to go to maybe Stansted Airport, right? I make the direction. And then what is the job of the driver, taxi driver? He got to take me to the uh, destination, right? Destination safely, safely, and then yeah, fastly, yeah, quickly, right? That is his job. That is his job. So we are thinking like God is like the taxi driver. We set up the direction. And then you know what? God, God, you got to take me there safely and quickly. You understand. And then once you get you take me there, we want to give him thanks. And then we want to give him some maybe tithe or offerings, <laughs> offerings, right? But, but as we are growing up, I mean, the spiritually, spiritually, our feeling, our thought is going to be a different. Today, I read about King Saul. He was the first king of Israel. How he was able to become a king of Israel? He was, not a, he was not born as a prince, right? He was not a son of the king because he was the first king. But how? Did he pass very special exam? No, right? Did he have some, you know, special uh, experience? No, no. He, he became a king of Israel. How? The only reason is what? By the grace of God. By the grace of God. God chose him. No other reason. No other reason. So here, John, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, he became a king of Israel. And then through the prophet Samuel, God spoke to him. Hey, I anointed you over my people Israel. So you got to listen to me. I remember Amalek. I remember what they did, what Amalek did when my people came up from Egypt. So they ambushed, they attacked, they caused a lot of problems for my uh, people, Israel. So, uh, so you got to go and attack 
these Amalekites, Amalekites. And then you shouldn't spare anything from Amalek. You got to destroy them utterly, okay? You got to destroy them utterly, even the child and even oxen, even every animals and everyone. You got to destroy them utterly. So when Saul heard that, he said, okay, I'll do that, I'll do that. So he gathered soldiers from all Israel. So with all those soldiers, he went to attack Amalek. Look at the verse. Look at the verse. Verse 7. And Saul attacked Amalekites from uh, Havilah all the way to Shur, which is east of Egypt. He also took Aga king of the Amalekites alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the, with the edge of the sword. Look at the verse 9. But Saul and the people sp uh, spared Aga and the best of the sheep. The oxen, the battlings, the lambs, and all that was good, and were unwilling to utterly destroy them. God told him to destroy everything in Amalek, right? In Amalek. But King Saul and his people didn't want to destroy all of them. So they spared, they spared something good in their eyes, right? Buried, buried cap the lambs, and then they spared the king of Amalek, Agak, and then also they spared a uh, good oxen, everything good in their eyes. What was the God's commandment? What was the God's uh, order? Utterly destroy all of them, right? Utterly destroy them. But Saul didn't listen to it. He spared something good in his eyes. Then look at the verse 10. Now, the word of the Lord came to Samuel, saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king. God said, I greatly regret. God chose him. Right? God established him. But now, because of not listening to God, because of not following the words of God, God said, I greatly regret. I have set up the king as a set up the soul as a king. And then look at here. Verse 11, and it grieved Samuel. When Samuel heard it, heard the words of God about Saul, it grieved him a lot. Why? Because Samuel anointed him, right? Samuel established him. So to Samuel, Saul is like his own, own son. You understand? He felt like his own son. He anointed Saul. He, anointed, he established the soul. But now God is saying, I have greatly regretted. And then I'm going to take another king for my people Israel. So it grieved Samuel a lot. And then Samuel cried out to the Lord all night. Samuel cried out, Lord, Lord, please could you give him one more chance? He cried, he cried a lot, all night. Then following morning, Samuel woke up early. He went to see, went to meet Saul. And when he went to look for Saul, he was told one news about what Saul did. Some people said, look at the verse 12. So when Samuel 
Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul. It was told Samuel, saying, Saul went to Carmel, and indeed he set up a monument for himself. He set up a monument for himself. Early morning he woke up. When he went to meet Saul, somebody told him, Samuel, the Saul, he made monument, monument for himself. No, what is the meaning of setting a mo uh, building a monument to celebrating what he did, right? To celebrating what he did. So King Saul, he was very happy about what he did. He was very proud of what he did. You understand? So he built the monument for himself. Brothers and sisters, let's think about the heart of God and heart of Samuel. God said, I have greatly regret. And Samuel, the, the other night, all night long, he cried, he cried. He was so sad. He cried out for whom? For Saul, but Saul himself, but Saul himself, he didn't know, he had no idea about the heart of God, about the heart of Samuel. He only thought about what? What he did. Oh, I attacked Amalek and I won, I won, I gained the victory. He only thought about thought about himself, what he did. He never thought about heart of God, heart of Samuel. As we know, the, son, the soul, he tried to kill David a lot. You know that, right? When God anointed David instead of Saul, and when David got the big reputation when he killed a giant Goliath, he, the Saul, thought like, I got to kill him. You know why? Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 18. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 8. Okay, from verse 7, I'm going to read it. So the woman sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. When Saul and David returned from the war, the war against the Philistines. Who was the general? Giant Goliath, right? Giant Goliath. Nobody was able to defeat Goliath. At that time, David, he stood up with faith and then he killed. He led his people, his country to victory, right? And then Saul and David returned. And when they returned, many women, they were welcoming Saul and David with dancing and singing a song. And they sang this song, what? Saul has slain his thousands, but David his ten thousands. Is it true? They sang, David did much more than, much more than Saul. That's true, right? Without David, without David, they couldn't defeat Goliath. But because of David, they were able to gain the victory. So this, everybody knows that. That's why the, these women, they sang this song. Look at the verse 8. Then Saul was very angry 
and the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed to David 10,000, and to me they have ascribed only thousands. Now, what more can he have but the kingdom? When he heard that, sad, that song, he became very angry. Why? Why? He, he thought about, he cared about only himself. Look at this. Look at what? I am a king, but they ascribed me only thousands, but they ascribed David with ten thousands. They can do that. They can do that because I'm a king. And then he felt like David is a, his big rival. If David leaves, goes in this way, what more can he have but the kingdom? Eventually, he will take my position, my kingdom, my people. Uh oh, that's why he's trying to kill David. Brothers and sisters, Saul is a king, right? King of Israel. If he is a real king, good king, he got to think about his people first or his country first. Am I right? Yeah, instead of thinking about himself, his future, or his account, he got to think about his people, his country first. But here, David, he was so faithful. He, David was so capable. But he was losing that faithful, capable servants. Why? Because of that kind of you know, very selfish, self-centered mindset. He was a king of Israel. As a king of Israel, he got to, he should have thought about, he should have thought about his people and his uh, country and the will of God for his uh, regime. That should be the first you understand what I mean? You understand what I mean? But so he didn't. He didn't. Let me show you the David. Let me show you what he what David did. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 23. First Samuel chapter 20, 23, verse 1. Then they told David, saying, Look, the Philistines are fighting against Kayla, and they are robbing the dressing floors. At this moment, chapter 23, the king Saul was chasing down to kill David. So he was running away. He couldn't stay at the city. So he was wandering. He was wandering in the wilderness. You understand? So he was not sure about his future because the king of Israel Saul, with the 3,000 of soldiers, they were chasing down David every day. That's why David his own situation was not very good. You understand? But at that time, somebody told David, hey, the people of Kela, the, the Philistines are fighting against the Kela, and they are robbing the dressing floors. He was told, David was told, the people of Kela were suffering from the Philistines. And then David felt like, felt like, oh, I got to do something. 
I got to do something for the people of Kerala. Think about it. If you are in that situation like David, if you are chasing down by, day, by soul, could you, could you think about some other people? No, no. Even your own life is not guaranteed, right? But David, he thought about, okay. When he was told that, he thought about, okay, I got to do something for the people of Kerala. You know why? You know why? David, he believed he was a king. You understand? David believed he was a king. He was anointed in chapter 17, right? Through Samuel, he was anointed. But he didn't become a king yet. But in his heart, since that time, since that time, in, he, in David's heart, you know what? He believed, he believed he was a king of Israel. If I'm a king of Israel, I got to protect my people from the Philistine, from the enemy. So he had those kind of mindset, mindset of the king. Although he didn't have the position, he didn't live in the palace, you understand? But he had that mindset as a king. That's why, that's why he asked to the Lord, Lord, shall I, shall I go and attack Philistine? God said, go, go and attack. So he spoke to his people, his servants, let's go and help Kayla. His people said, no, no, we can't. We can't. Think about, th you got to think about where you are. You got to think about your situation. You, this is not the time to help other people. You understand? So you got to be careful. We can't, we can't. That's what his people talked about. But David asked the Lord once again, Lord, should I? God said, go and help them. So David said, no, God told me, and I got to, let's go. So he went to the Kela and helped them and saved them from Philistines. So he was a king. But he didn't have a mindset of the king. So, David, he was not an actual king, but he had that mindset as a king. That was the different. That was the different. Brothers and sisters, by the grace of God, we were saved. By the grace of God, we were in, we are in the church. By the grace of God, we could get a chance to follow and serve the Lord. I believe it was big, big grace, big, big grace. Since we are saved, since we are saved, some brothers and sisters, they are living like King Saul. And some brothers and sisters, they are following the way of David. Way of David. Brother Rensford, he talked about the missionary in Ghana. I remember how God saved him. Once he was a very successful businessman. He was very rich once. But because of his wife, his wife betrayed him. He lost everything and he was running a very a big, a big delivery company, delivery company. Once he had more than 100, more than 100 vehicles, big trucks. Like, 
So he was a very successful businessman. But because of his wife, he lost everything. And then only one vehicle left in his hand. He wanted to kill. He wanted to kill his wife. But at that time, by the grace of God, because his office was just next to the church. One day one brother knocked that office door, office door. And then, so that was the moment he was able to listen to the gospel for the first time in his life. Through that brother, God visited him. And then God touched his, his heart. He was saved. He loved, he loved the church and words of God a lot. His office was very close to the church. So whenever he had time, he came to the church and then he spent his time at the church, reading the Bible, praying to the Lord, and playing with some other brothers and sisters. In the church, by the grace of God, he was able to remarry, remarried with one of sisters. And then he was ordained as a, some years later, he was ordained as an elder of the church. Every church, loves him a lot because he was always, always smile, always smile. Every church loved him a lot. When he was retired at the age of 60, he said, I want to serve, I want to serve this gospel. I want to spend the rest of my life for the gospel only. So the, by the guidance of the church, he went to the Ghana, not as a missionary, but as a, just one of the brothers at first time, at first time. Because he wanted to serve the gospel, the church. So he went to Ghana after some years. We thought like, oh, uh, he has some talent for preaching the words. So we ordained him. We established him as one of the pastors, one of the pastors. That's how he became a pastor and missionary. He was, I think he was the oldest missionary in our mission. He was born in 1943, 1943. He was the oldest. He was one year older than Pastor Park. So he loved Ghana and Ghanaian brothers and sisters a lot, a lot. Several years ago, I went to Ghana. More than several years ago, I went to Ghana. I met this pastor. He testified to me how he built his church, how he built the church. He got some support from Korean church every month, about five, I do not remember exactly, 500 US dollar. Not very big money. Yeah, every month he got support from Korean church. But he didn't use he didn't use that money at all. He kept it in his you know in his bank account. After three or four months, five hundred becomes two thousand, three thousand, right? And 
he took out that money and with that money he purchased he purchased a cement and something for building a church he didn't spend he didn't spend any money for himself so in that way slowly slowly with the brothers and sisters there he built his church when i heard that i thought like oh i got to help him i got to, i got to help him at that time i was in canada so i wanted to help him but i couldn't i couldn't i'm so sorry i'm so sorry I really wanted to help him to build his church, but the situation didn't allow me. Sorry to tell you this. I couldn't. I couldn't. Three or four years ago, he lost his hearing because of several, several infarctions. You know what that is? Several, several infarctions. Not several. What is that word? I forgot the words. Yeah, because of something stri struck him. So he lost his hearings three or four years ago. He couldn't hear anything. So we thought like he can do his ministry anymore because he lost his hearings, right? He's not a Viet, Viet Ben. But, but you know what? Even Pastor Park was considering about taking him back to Korea. But he said, no, no, I can do that, Pastor. Yeah, I know I cannot hear anything, but I can speak. I can speak. Know why? God still gave me this speaking. God want me to speak. God want me to speak. God want me to preach. So he wanted to stay. He wanted to do his ministry. So we said, okay, we just let him do it. And recently, he became very weak. So we told him many times to go back to Korea to get some treatment, to get some treatment. Because Korea is a bit better than Ghana, right? So we told him many times to go back to Korea to get some treatment. But he said, no, I can't. I can't. You know why? Past Park told me to preach the words here, to live here, and die here, and buried here. Buried here. I'm going to die here. I'm going to be buried here. Then, last week, God called him. He went to be with the Lord. He went to be with the Lord. At the age of 70, 77, 77, he went to be with the Lord. Book of Psalms, brothers and sisters, open the book of Psalms, chapter 90, 90. Verse 10, the days of our lives are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they are 80 years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. The days of our lives are 70 years, 
if you are healthy or strength strong maybe 80 right yeah 70 80 average in average 70 and 80 yeah this is our lives this is our lives 70 years 80 years maybe some of young uh, young men of you in your thoughts 70 years 80 years it seems like very long right it seems like very very long but you know what i got to tell you this it's not that long it's not that long it's true not that long okay who's the oldest among us who's the oldest stella Stella, can I ask how old you are? Stella, we cannot hear you. Please unmute, unmute your mic, your mic. Uh, uh, we cannot hear you. Yeah, how old? 64. 64. <laughs> okay, 64. 60 years left or 16 years left? <laughs> I don't know. 64. 64. Okay, I think the sister Sala is the oldest, right? She is the oldest. Maybe some of you think like, oh, 70. Oh, it's too long, but not that long. Time flies, right? It flies away, not flies, it missiles. Sometimes I feel like it rockets. You know, I feel like yesterday I was a teenager. Can you believe that? <laughs> Can you believe? Yeah, it's true. You know, the here, in here, I'm still a teenager. But look at my sons. They are, they are no, even my son, they are no longer teenagers. Oh my, oh my. I got to say time flies. This is a life. Not very long. In this short life. In this short life. What kind of life do you want to live? For what? For what purpose? For what reason? Do you want to leave? In front of you, in front of every one of us, there are two different kinds of life. One for like soul. One for like baby. Soul, King Soul, by the grace of God, he, yeah, he experienced the grace of God, but still, he was doing everything only for himself. He set a monument for himself. He didn't want to celebrate God's grace. He didn't want to celebrate God's help. He didn't want to glorify the Lord, right? He wanted to celebrate what he did. What he did. But David, I know from time to time, he made some mistakes. Yeah, he was not perfect. Yeah, I know. But still, still, he was for God. He was for his people. He was for his own country. He was for God. At that time, God was for him. Right? God was for him. Brothers and sisters, last Saturday, I participated online funeral service. As I was participating in the online funeral service, God asked me, God told me many things. And his death, his glorious life is asking us, what kind of life do you want to live? 
What kind of life do you want to live? Do you still want to live for yourself? For your own glory? For your own benefit? No. No. That is the life of soul. That is not just for yourself. Brothers and sisters, God wants to lead all of us to the life of David. To the life of David. He was a king. He was chosen. We were, we are chosen for the will of God for this generation. Let's go to Matthew, book of Matthew chapter 6. Verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Seek first the kingdom of God and the righteousness of his righteousness. I know in our lives, we need job. We need money. Yeah, we need this and that. Of course. Of course. I know. But Bible says, seek first. Seek first. Kingdom of God. And his righteousness. Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says. The righteousness of God in it. In the gospel of Jesus Christ. Righteousness of God is revealed. Right? So seek the first. Seek first. Kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then everything shall be added to you. Do you believe this? Yeah, I know. All of you want to all of you want to live for God. Want to work for God. Work for the church, but we don't put the will of God the at first place. Seek first and then God will add everything God will take care of everything else in my life in my life in our short life I know there are so many things we can do there are so many ways of life but God wants us to live like that missionary This missionary Lee, he has his, his own sons. His own sons was not a, is not a believer. They want to take the body of missionary Lee from Ghana. So at first time we said, yes, okay, because it's his son, right? It's his son. His sons want to take the body. And they want to bury his father in Korea. That's why they can come and visit him often. So we think, okay, it's your choice. So when we said that, many brothers and sisters in Ghana, they said, no, no, you can't, you can't. You can't take the body of missionary Lee. He said he, he wants to bury here in Ghana. We want to bury him here at the church site. And then every day we are going to see him. 
every day, as we are seeing, as we are seeing him, we are going to preach the words. We are going to follow his way. That's what brothers and Ghanaian brothers and sisters said. And then we said, okay, if you want. So he will be buried in Ghana. Brothers and sisters, his glory, glorious life is asking us what life, what kind of life you have to live for yourself or for the will of God, for the kingdom of God, for his own righteousness, for the gospel. Yeah, you can spend your, your times, your lives for yourself and also, you can spend your times for the will of God. It's your choice. It's your choice, of course. You're free. You're free to choose any life. It's your life. But God is recommending us, telling us this is better. Just like this, if we go to the restaurant first time. We don't know which one is good in this restaurant, right? So we ask, what is your recommend? What is, what is the special for today? Today's a special. What is your recommend? Have you ever asked those questions? Of course, right? Many times. Because when we don't know, we don't know about our lives. Yeah, we don't know about which life is good life. You can ask to the Lord, what is your recommend? Lord, what is your recommend? Brothers and sisters, you listen to wait, wait or waitress saying so easily. But how come you don't listen to God's recommendation? God is recommending us this life, David's life, this missionary Lee's life is so precious. Why don't you take that recommendation from God? And he will be glorified through our lives. One day, one day we'll meet this missionary in heaven. And there, and there, we will praise our Lord together forever, forever. And there, we'll <laughs> okay, finally, let me show you a couple of Bible verses. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Today, when I woke up, I read this part of the Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Apostle Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Many of us are on the race. Many of us have the faith. But you know what? Not everyone finished the race. Not everyone kept the faith. Look at the verse 10. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed for Thessalonica, Crescens for Galatia, Titus for Dalmatia. Demas, I don't know who he is, but I believe one of the brothers of Apostle Paul. Demas has forsaken me because he loved 
this present world. So he has forsaken Paul, forsaken this faith. This thing happens a lot. This thing happens a lot at the time of Paul. Even this time, even our time, same thing is happening a lot. Am I right? Yeah, it's true. Demas and Titus and many of them, they left from this faith. They betrayed this faith. But Paul, he said, I have fought good fight. I have finished my race. I have kept my faith. How glorious that was. The missionary Lee, I believe he is able to say the same thing, right? I have kept my faith. I have finished my journey, my race. And then look at the verse. Verse 8. Finally, there is laid out for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on the day and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. He said, there is for me the crown of righteousness, not only for him, but for who have loved his appearing. Brothers and sisters, you know why God has given us our, the rest of our lives? The rest of our lives, this is not for us for the will of God, amen. I don't know, it might be 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, I don't know, nobody knows. But for the rest of my lives, for the rest of our lives, it's not for all of us. It's for the will of God. Seek first his kingdom, his righteousness. And then God will take care of everything in your life. Amen. Amen. So we want to follow the way of David and way of missionary Lee. Okay, everyone.